Good morning. This is Prophetess Dr. Sandra Ingram from the Rebuilding the Walls Ministry. And we are so happy that you decided to join us today. Well, we realize that the joy of the Lord is our strength and to God be the glory for the things he has done. If something is said today, and we pray that the word blesses you, inspires you, enriches you, uh, causes you to think, uh, please subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel. We would greatly appreciate it. If you have any comments or concern, please uh, say those also. Right now, we will begin our service. And we're going to have our opening prayer and our scripture by Elder Michael Ingram. Good morning and God bless you. Let us pray. God, we come to you one more time thanking you for your presence, thanking you for your glory. God, we thank you for your goodness to us, to all humanity, God, to all creation. We thank you because you created us, you love us, and you prepared a way for us to have access to you. So God, we ask that as we come before you, God, that you bless this effort, reach beyond the cameras, touch those people that are watching, God, touch bodies, touch minds, touch souls, inspire your people, God, revive us and enlighten us with your word. Move in this service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll be reading from Matthew, the fourth chapter, starting at verse 1 through verse 12. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And by the way, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Verse 2, and when he had forth fasted 40 days and 40 nights, Afterward, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the father. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Verse 7, Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee. Amen. God had a blessing to the reading of his said word. And, and now we'll have a selection from Elder Michael. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear and let it be a sweet sweet sound in your ear we exalt thee 
We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh, Lord. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh, Lord, we, we, we love you, Lord, and we lift our voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, our King, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Lord, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Amen. And let's just take a moment to worship and tell the Lord, thank you for his goodness and his mercy. Thank him that you are yet in the land of the living. Thank him for how he's taking care of you one more time. We worship you, we praise you, we bless you, God, because you are worthy to be praised. You are the Lord of Lords and you are the King of Kings. And we ask you to come, Holy Spirit, into this service right now. The word, Lord, bless your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help it, Lord, to fall on fertile ground. We thank you, we praise you, we magnify you to God. We give you all the glory, all the praise, God. And we thank you for being our deliverer. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you. And for being our soon coming king. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things he has done and the things he uh, is going to do. We thank him, we praise him, we magnify him because of who he is. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, we praise you, we bless you, we honor you. And we give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. This morning, we thank the Lord for the word of God that he has sent on today. And today we're going to be talking about how to live and not die in your wilderness. And we all have wilderness experiences. We all have those times when we feel alone and like nobody's there and that why am I here, God? What did I do? Did I do something wrong? Am I still in the right place? But I'm here to tell you, if you're in the wilderness, you're in the right place because there's a purpose for your wilderness. And so in Matthew, when it, in Matthew 4 and 1, when it talks about the spirit led Jesus into the desert, and I want to tell you, if the spirit, if God can lead Jesus into the desert, into his wilderness, you are going to be led into the wilderness because wilderness has a purpose in our life and is not for destruction and is not a place to die. And then after Jesus spent 40 days and nights without food, Jesus was tempted. So in other words, you may, I don't know how long you're going to be in your wilderness, but it doesn't matter because after Jesus was tempted, he was hungry and it was a setup by God because what we have to realize is the devil thought 
he, well, he did. He fooled Eve. And he tempted her and he fooled and man fell. But this time, Jesus, the son of God was here and the devil had no power to tempt him and to make it fall. So God was making a point. I'm going to lead my son into the wilderness. And you know what? Devil, it is nothing you can do about it. And he is not going to fall. Because, and you know, and I want you to realize that Jesus was tempted. He had just been baptized by John the Baptist. The Holy Spirit had came down. The dove had rested on him. And God had said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And then immediately he said, go into the, go in the desert. So I want to tell you, right now, you can be baptized, you can be holy, you can be doing whatever you want to do, and God will lead you right into the wilderness, because there's a point to your wilderness ex experience. So Jesus, remember, he encountered this wilderness experience to prove that the enemy had no longer power to defeat us. And remember, you, you, you can be doing it right. You can be in a good place and still have a wilderness experience. Don't let the enemy fool you and tell you, oh, you haven't done this and this is why you're gonna, no. That is not while you are there. So when we have our wilderness experience, like I said, it's not our place to die. That's where we're going to live and prosper. But I want to tell you, you're going to be alone. You're going to be by yourself. People ain't going to like you. It's going to be nobody that you can turn on. It's going to seem like even God can't hear you. But I'm going to tell you, there's a point to your wilderness experience. And you know what? You may feel like you're dying in the wilderness. But you know, there's physical death and there's physical sick, spiritual death. And that death physically is the body dies, but spiritually is just separation from God. So in your wilderness experience, be sure you don't get separated from God. So what the wilderness, in the wilderness, do you know what happened? God introduces us to him in a deeper, more profound way. Remember, Sometimes you pray, Lord, I need a closer walk with you. I want to do better. How can I be better? I want to go higher. And this is the way you go. I hate to tell you, but it's through the wilderness and it's through the desert. What better place for God to show up it's it, but in a desert? We cry out to him. And in the desert and in the wilderness, we begin looking for God. Oh, we're going to hit our knees. We're going to hit our knees in the desert and we are going to seek God. And you know what? We're going to ask him to forgive us and we are going to repent. We're going to cry out to him and seek him. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Uh, and but then shall you call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with your heart. Believe me, in the desert, in the wilderness, you're going to be searching for, for God with your whole heart. Even though you know, you don't even have no idea why God is leading you there. You got to trust him. You got to have faith in him to believe that he knows what he's doing with your life. And you know what? You got to let go of the control reins and you got to let go of, I need to know God. What you don't know, you don't. You just need to follow and listen the will of God. Jesus was led by the spirit to be tempted by the devil because it showed the power and the purpose of God. Like I said, he was tempted, didn't win that battle, but God won this one. And he shows the devil, you don't have no power. And believe me, I have all authority in my hands. Remember, 
I want you to know there's a goal for your wilderness experience. And what is that? Remember, the wilderness experience is a symbol of a new beginning because when you go into the wilderness and you are there and you'll be tempted and you got to fight and you got to seek and you got to pray and you got to worship. When you come out of the wilderness, you're going to be a better person. You're going to have your faith will be strengthened. Everything you know, and you will have a closer relationship and I walk and talk with God. So remember, we have these experiences and in the desert. Uh, there's a need when you go into the desert, you don't, you, there's a need for food and water because you don't have those. But we're not talking about the physical food. We're talking about the food. We need the word, the word of God. That's the food we're looking for. The water is the Holy Spirit. And remember that God provided manna, which is food for the Israelites when they were crossing the desert. So your food is the word. Your water is the Holy Spirit. And then the wilderness is a place of isolation and waiting. Remember when Elijah was running from Jezebel and uh, Rahab because they were killing all the prophets in the land and he went into a cave and then God, he, he was waiting to hear the voice of the Lord and God said, come out and stand on the mountain and stand on the mountain. And he did, he said, now listen for me, I'm gonna talk to you. But God wasn't in a storm and he wasn't in the world when he was in a still small voice. So in the wilderness, you have to be isolated and you're gonna have to listen for God and see God. And then remember, about divine deliverance. There's divine deliverance in the desert. When Hagar was sent out and Sarah got mad and said, okay, I'm tired of you and your son. I want y'all to get out. And Abraham let her put him out, let her put him out. And she went into the desert. But you know what? God, she and she said, Ero, I, Lord, come see about me. So in your isolation, you might have to say, Ero, I, Lord, come see about me. And what happened? Sarah changed her mind and Hagar got to come back. So a wilderness experience it teaches you divine deliverance. And then it is a place of renewal. I know you're thinking, why did she get all this stuff about the wilderness? Because we got the wrong idea about the wilderness experience. It's a renewal of the encounters that we, we had with God, like the encounters that God, that Moses had with God with the burning bush. So in the wilderness, you're going to have some encounters with God. You're going to see some things you hadn't seen before. You're going to hear some things you hadn't seen. God will take you to some places where you've never been for, before. So how do you survive and conquer this wilderness? Because the devil is going to come over when you're down, when you're out, when you're hurting, when your family ain't doing right, when you don't have no money, when you don't have no food, and when you're depressed and everything's going, that's when you're going, that's your temptation. How do you survive and conquer? Lord have mercy. Temptation in the wilderness. First, you got to master your attitude. You have to realize that in the wilderness, this ain't no time to panic. This is the time to gird up your loins and put on the whole armor. So don't panic. Change your attitude. Build a shelter. So because in the desert, it's going to get hot. It's going to get cold. But you know what? Build a shelter. And the shelter is the covering of the almighty God. Find you some food. We already said that's the word. And some water. Ooh, find you some Holy Ghost that will lead, guide, and direct you. Then you need to isolate yourself and listen like Elisha did for that still, small voice. You got to be able to hear the word of God, hear God talking to you. So it's imperative that we be able to hear what God is saying. Then you're going to seek deliverance and remember this is a time of revitalization. It's a time of renewal. So if you, the devil, you know, like I said, he'll come and tip you when you're lonely, when you're tired, when you're facing obstacles and things just not going right. But focus on these three areas. Number one, 
focus on your physical needs and desires. Focus on the possessions and the power that you have in the name of Jesus. You know what? Focus on your pride because sometimes you, you might need to come down a notch. First John 2 and 15 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, it is not the father, but of the world. So what's the purpose of the wilderness then? Honey, it develops your faith and it revitalizes and develops you with a deeper connection with God. Your relationship is restored. And even if you had a relationship before, it is much better now. So how do you get through the wilderness? Number one, take your eye on the problem off the problem and put it on God. Believe, have faith, pray, worship. And most of all, the first, what Jesus requires us to do is to repent. So then what's the goal of the wilderness experience? It shifts you, it reduces you, and it increases your faith. And I want to say that again, it shifts you from where you are to a higher, deeper level connection with God. It reduces you, takes that pride down. It takes the you out of you and put God's first. And then it increases your faith. Because in the wilderness, you don't have nobody to turn to but God. But then you realize God is the only person or that you need, and he will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. So if you are going through a wilderness experience today, the best thing to do is not to die, but live through your wilderness experience. Rejoice because he is doing transformation work in you making you more like him, less of me and more of thee. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So don't be afraid to go through your transformation process because you're going to come out on the other end better. First John 2, 15, love not the world, nor the things in the world. If any man love the world, and I've said this before, the Father is not in him. And for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life is not of the Father. And I'm repeating this scripture because it's very important. And then Psalms 118, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That's your motto for in the wilderness. I'm not going to die, but I'm going to live and declare the works of the Lord. To God be the glory for the word of God on today. We pray that you were blessed and we pray that something was said to encourage you, to enlighten you, to strengthen you because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we want to be better. We want to be more like him. So despise not your wilderness experience. To God be the glory. So Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord, for how you have spoken through your service. And I ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy, my, thy strength acceptable in thy strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Lord, if there's anyone who does not know Jesus in the free pardon of your sin, please let us know. We are here. If you have questions about uh, 
your the way you live or what God is doing or something that you don't understand in the word, we are here for you. And if I would like for everyone to just bow their heads and say this little prayer with me. Lord, I give you my whole heart. I rededicate my life to you. I promise to thank and praise you. I promise to spend more time with you every day. I forgive those who trespassed against me, wounded me, hurt me, abused me. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. To God be the glory. We pray that you have a blessed week on uh, next week. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Be blessed.